Welcome back to Straight Up RC, everybody. This is Chris, and I want to take time in this video to show you exactly how I installed my custom 17 millimeter LED halo ring lights into the Red Cat 64. The installation of the actual buckets is pretty self-explanatory because all you're going to do is put these exactly where the stock pieces were. The remainder of the video is simply to demonstrate exactly how I wired up the headlights, how I got the 17mm halo rings to fit into the actual buckets, showing how I kind of tuck the wires and put them in certain places and use wire clips. So that's what you're going to see in this video. So first thing first here, just need to simply identify exactly how to remove the headlight buckets. The stock headlight buckets are simply held in by two screws, top and bottom. And to remove them, it's pretty simple. You simply need to take a Phillips head screwdriver and remove the screw in the top and the bottom. And the buckets will pop off the little mounts that are sitting on the front body piece. As you can see, when the chrome back pieces are pulled off, it leaves clear circles in the body paint. The body paint was intentionally left clear, obviously, so the lights could shine through. All these custom buckets did was capitalize on the fact that there is a clear part of the body right behind the stock headlight bucket, because if there wasn't, then this wouldn't work. So now that we've got the stock headlight buckets out, you can see the difference between the custom headlight buckets and the stock headlight buckets. They're about the same size. However, we get to install these custom halo ring LED lights into them. So if you watched my design video, I stated that the ring is about 19 millimeters, including the actual seal of the LED light. However, I made the circle a little bit smaller. That way it's snug to the bucket of the LED light. That causes a little bit of an issue when you try and push them in because it's really, really tight. So what you see me doing here is using either some sort of gear grease or in this case, I literally use some old chapstick that I'm not going to use. So I just use some of the chapstick to give it a little bit of a lubrication that way it can slide in a little easier otherwise you'd be fighting the rubber against the plastic print. So simply applying a tiny tiny little bit of gear grease or that chapstick is going to help right here because it allows the rubber piece to slide in a lot easier. Now you don't necessarily have to do this you can probably press these in. It'll just be a little bit harder to do so. You can also take a file and file down the inner wall or kind of, you know, smooth it out a little bit to see if it'll help these slide in. But the variance is very, very small. So you don't have to put a lot of effort in. I just wanted it to be really easy, nice and smooth. And I figured I've got some old gear grease or chapstick laying around. So it worked out perfectly for me. So now that the lights are installed into each of the pans, Panels, you can simply take them and put them exactly where the stock headlight buckets used to be. Here the headlight buckets simply pop right into place and you can take the exact same stock screws and reinstall each headlight bucket exactly where the original ones were. Once the lights are flush with the front panel of the custom headlight bucket, when you install these, it basically puts that ring light right up against the clear part of the body so they won't be sucked back or they won't look like they're sunk in or anything. It actually works pretty good. Just like the stock headlight buckets, you don't need to put a lot of tension here. These screws don't need to be insanely tight. And you can see that they basically mount up and fit exactly where the original ones were. You'll also notice that it makes the headlight dome in itself where the lights were a little darker. Now I'm doing a little bit of a snug test on this and you'll notice that I pulled the back of the wires. I don't recommend this. You don't want to pull the back end of the wire to disconnect anything inside that yellow sealant. If you want to do a snug test, simply pull on the headlight right near the bucket and that'll be your better option to do a snug test. Now we're installing the Y harness into the channel four port on the receiver. The channel four port is the free and available port that operates off of one of the levers on the remote, which you're gonna see here in a sec. So you simply plug the wire into channel four and then once you have that wire plugged into channel four, we're gonna take the two ports on the end of the Y harness and we're going to plug them into each of the headlights. Make sure that you match the wiring, otherwise they won't work. Brown, orange, yellow, or brown, red, yellow, whatever wiring you have to the correct Y harness. 
And here you go, fully operational lights. Once you turn the car on, they're gonna turn on real quick and then turn off, and then you can operate them with the channel four switch. Simply flipping the switch up and down is gonna change between the different colors and the different modes of the lights, as you can see here. Simple as that. Now we know that they work. Now we can do the wiring install for the rest of the actual application. So I'm gonna be using these little adhesive back wire clip holders. They work great. I just found these for this install directly because I had never used them before. I'm used to using zip ties and things like that or just double sided tape, electrical tape, anything like that. But I wanted these to be really nice and clean. So I used these adhesive little wire holders that I found on Amazon and they are big enough that they can hold more than just one strand of wire. You know, you got a, some wire holders out there are really small and they're gonna only hold like one or two wires. These were perfectly designed. That way you could put more than just like one little wire, two little wires in there. And you're gonna notice that I actually use the wire holder to hold several bands of the actual receiver and wire harness wires. It's actually pretty impressive that the way the ones that I found work because they're like kind of pressurized. So they have like this little plastic pressure piece in it that when you close it down, it really holds the wires very snug as you can see. I'll also put a link down below for the wire holders that I found on Amazon. Now, I probably wouldn't have had to do this, but these Y harnesses were two feet long. They were 24 inch wire harnesses that was only chosen because we weren't sure exactly how easy the process was going to be or where the wires were going to need to be so the largest wire harness was chosen simply because it was a possibility that that's how much we would need so here we go all wired up into channel four all nice and tucked now i just need to figure out exactly how to do the same thing to the body and honestly it was kind of difficult because there's so much wire on these LED lights that there's no real easy way to tuck it up. And because the front has the suspension system inside and the wheel wells and everything, I didn't want anything to get caught up or hit or snagged. So I was trying to think of ways to get the light wiring nice and tucked. So I decided to go with tucking all the wiring into the front grill because quite frankly, the only option that I was thinking about doing was zip tying everything underneath the front body mount. I wasn't really gonna do that. I didn't really wanna just put a whole bunch of wires. So I decided to make it look as clean as possible. And with these wire holders, it was a great opportunity to use those because all I had to do was kind of wrap the wires perfectly into the wire harness holders and it's going to end up looking pretty clean so here i just staggered the wire holders on the front end because i know it'll keep them away from everything that's kind of tucked up underneath the body and i kind of just went with a back and forth pattern holding it you know no real idea just a simple wire wrap i guess but it started to clean up really nicely it was tucking the wires away really clean and I figured that if I can get them staggered enough, it would be easy to manipulate later on or if there's any maintenance that needs to be done, like any messing around with the wires or rewiring or something falls out or something needs to be replaced, it's gonna be really easy to get to. Just take the body off, unclip three of the clips and bingo, you're good to go. So you can see I have the wires kind of tucked and wrapped in the front. I have them kind of slid up on the hood. I'm gonna actually take the other two wire pieces and stagger them, that way I don't have to utilize the body mount at all. So I took two more of the wire harness holders and kind of put them next to each other on the front end to hold the left side's wires. And at this point, all I needed to do was hold down the other control piece on the secondary wire harness. So I added two more of the wire clips clipped in the last bit of the secondary light sit. And basically that left me with enough room to get the remaining two wires over to the side of the body where the idea was that I would be able to take the body off, flip it sideways, and the wires would have enough room that it wouldn't stretch or pull on each other. So I'm guiding the wires over to the right side of the body when it's right side up. 
That way when they meet up, they can easily stretch still, but it won't be strenuous on the wires or the receiver wires. I kind of figured these wires are kind of loose and hanging around, so why not add another clip and put it in the corner? Tucked up nice and easy, so now all the wiring set up. I'm gonna put one more wire clip right here on the right side to kind of guide the wires even further over and out of the way so they don't get hit on the wheel well or stuck or anything. And there we go, now we got the wires all nice and tucked and wrapped up in the front. They're all out of the way. They're gonna be up against the body. They shouldn't shake loose. They shouldn't drop down. They shouldn't hit the suspension system, nothing. They should be nice and tucked. So we're just checking to make sure we have exactly enough room and we should put the body right next to it. Should be able to plug those in and have plenty of room to move the body around. Obviously it goes right back on top, no problem. And like I said, those wire clips need to be out of the way of everything, including the steering system. So this actually was really easy to kind of do once I had all those little wire clips. So now we're gonna make sure the body fits as it should and do a full functioning light test. So the very first light color that you're gonna see is gonna be just the solid white. And then every time you hit the switch thereafter, it's gonna change the colors. There's also an RGB rainbow effect and there's a flashing changing color. There's obviously strobe. And then the last color is like a teal color, like an aqua color, and then it turns off. So this last little bit is information for anybody using these lights. When you first hit the switch, it's gonna turn the lights on, and then when you go back up and down, it's going to activate the channel again and chain the lights. So, when you leave the switch up, however, on the 64 and hit the lower front, it turns off the lights, and then it will start changing the light color. This only works if the switch is up. So you can technically have the switch up and it'll change the lights. However, if you wanna keep a specific color and jump the front, you have to leave the switch up or every time you hit the switch while the switch is down and the lights are on or off, it will change the color of the lights as you're gonna see here in a second. So every time you jump the front while the channel four switch is down, it will change the color of the lights. So in order to keep a specific color, let's say red, you have to change the color of the lights to red with the switch up, and then you have to leave the switch up in order to keep the specific color. Once the color is kept, then you can start to jump the front end again. And you're gonna notice that there's a different combination of this because <clears throat> I noticed that while I was driving it around, I would put the front down, change the headlight color, jump it, put the front back up, change the headlight color, forget which direction the switch was and all that. So this in particular is kind of important because you're gonna notice that you accidentally change the color of your lights and you're not gonna know why. So here is the finished install of the Y harness and the headlights into the custom headlight buckets in the 64. Again, I choose to use these wire clips and the wire harness was provided. So you can wire it up any way you choose. You can use zip ties, Velcro, double-sided tape, anything you'd like. I only chose to do it this way because it was simple and easy. And these wire clips work really, really well. So I suggest anybody that hasn't used them to pick some up. Like I said, I'm gonna put the link in the video down below. If anybody has any questions about the install process or how the lights work in general, feel free to message me or leave a comment down below. I know that the lights in themselves can work in other applications like other RC installs on crawlers and things like that. These just work perfectly and like I said the custom headlight buckets are just a added bonus to the install. If anybody's interested in getting a pair of these feel free to contact me any way possible and I can give you that info. Keep an eye out for the next videos because I have two more videos to do in the series with this 64 including some custom 3D printed window plaques and also some vinyl wrap lip 3D printed wheels from 3D scale that are going to be installed on this 64. So it should be pretty cool. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.